stay on the Beam channel, I want to talk about the limitations of types in Erlang and Elixir. And before I start, I'd like to just let you know that if you would like some help getting your team up to speed with either Erlang or Elixir, please give me a shout. There's a Calendly link below. If you're coming to Erlang or Elixir from a language like, say, Haskell or Elm or OCaml or F Sharp, you may have gotten used to the really dynamic and expressive type systems in those languages, especially um, my experiences in Elm. And in Elm, you can actually guarantee that if your program compiles, it will run without failure. That's a really cool thing. Why can't you do that in Erlang on the Beam? There are two main issues here. The first is one of the things that they were worrying about when they found the Beam is hardware failure. So you can have the best type system in the world, but if somebody comes along and simply unplugs your computer, it's dead. And while the unplug scenario is probably not what they had in mind, there were obviously hardware failure in general was something that concerns them in a system that runs in the field Internet of Internet of Things style. This was actually for telephones, which is we had, they hadn't invented the term Internet of Things yet, but that's the idea. Where hardware is going to fail on you. You just plug enough hardware, you run it for long enough, it, something will fail. It just happens. And the system has to be able to cope with that. The second is the code upgrade problem. Elm can make the promises it makes because at the time you run the type checker, you know what all the code is going to look like. You have the entirety of the code. You have complete information. Erlang does not have complete information. If you have two modules, we'll call them you know, A and B, and a function in A calls a function in B, you can run Dialyzer and you can say, okay, this is consistent. The problem is you deploy it to production and next month somebody comes along and upgrades module B. Module A calls the function in module B. When you ran Dialyzer, it was completely consistent. But now you've made an upgrade and, oops, it's not consistent. Maybe you also upgraded A and you have the old version of A calling the new version of B. And that's really hard to do. I'm, I'm th smarter minds than I have worked on this and I suspect, although I can't say for sure, that it may in fact in some level be unsolvable. But there's no way to write a contract, which is fundamentally what a type is, between two modules if you know that the contract has to be enforced, but also that the code can change. I, I, think, it's, um, I think it's an attractive problem. Uh, again, I'm not an academic. Don't, I, wouldn't swear, I wouldn't say that's definitely true, but it seems likely. So this is the other problem. If we want to have upgradability in our code, we want to be able to roll in a new update without interrupting our service. So that if, you know, the telephone switch, when you upgrade the code to fix some bug or, you know, add a new feature or what have you, you, know, you don't want to simply say, okay, we're just going to turn this thing off and drop all the calls in progress. That would, that would not be acceptable. So how do you balance those? You, know, you have to, it's like the cap theorem. You can't have both. You have to give up on one or the other. And in this case, we give up on the consistency to favor availability and partition tolerance. Actually, it's probably exactly the cap theorem. That is a major issue in a system like Erlang where you have a distribution of processes and they may be in different states and it's rather intractable. That's an issue of why Erlang can't have strong, type, strong typing in some other languages. If you found that useful, please like and subscribe below. And if you would like help getting your team up to speed with Erlang and Elixir, uh, please give me a shout. There's a Calendly link in the link in the bottom, and I love hearing from you.